Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 251 reveals the location of Sukuna's final finger, Megami doesn't want to be saved, and Maki's grand entrance mirrors that of Toji Fushigoro. So let's pick up where things last ended off as it's finally revealed that he was able to copy Sukuna's curse technique by using the last remaining Sukuna finger. Sukuna hinted that Satoru Gojo may have had the final finger, and guess who ended up consuming it? Narratively speaking, we need to go two ways. We know that Sukuna is this all-encompassing, malevolent, evil entity, and we have to see him full power. So, will he end up consuming the last finger so now we can see him at his true, ultimate, maximum strength? Or is that kind of the subversion of expectations you guys wanted here where, no, 19 fingers is fully enough, Gojo died, Higuruma died, more sorcerers are going to die in this battle, and whether or not this is the final battle, or at least leading up to it, there would be a part of me that would be disappointed in that the vein of all these sorcerers work for not if Sukuna doesn't outright lose in this particular moment. Or more specifically, even if he ends up consuming his final finger, meaning that Yuta somehow needs to die, what kind of power up or even last trump card can all the Jujutsu sorcerers muster up to face off against Sukuna in the real final battle? But has anyone ever thought for two seconds how they said eating one of Sukuna's cursed finger means your chance of survival is like one in one million or something of like that, but so far we've seen Yuji consume it, Megami consume it, Yuta consume it, that special grade cursed spirit consumed it. I don't know, man. As Vegeta would say, this is the Super Saiyan bargain sale, and it seems like that statistic of consuming a finger where only one in one million will end up surviving, it's a total farce. Gege Akatame, you are a liar. Hashtag liar. Now, of course, Jump Kaizen wouldn't get its signature name, and Yuji is highly determined to end everything with this last chance. Because of the Shuei copyright ninjas out there. I'm gonna reveal some panels here and there, but oh my god, does it look so satisfying when Yuji punches Sukuna in the face, and then he even grabs him at one point and knees him in the face too, and spits blood in his face. As, you know what, let's go ahead and transition into that. Yuji basically confirmed to have blood manipulation. Remember a few chapters back when we did see a piercing blood? And given the obvious context that I just assumed that this is Yuji who's doing it because, well, you know, Chosa has a pierced gaping hole in his sternum that there was no shot that it was able to be him. A lot of people did say, what do you mean Yuji did piercing blood? He doesn't have piercing blood. Hello, have we been reading the same story? He most likely consumed all the rest of the wound paintings. He has gone on record to say the Noritoshi Kamo, thank you for being a good teacher because Choto's a shitty teacher. So look at that. If it looks like a duck and acts like a duck, Yuji knows blood manipulation as we see here as the blood spat on Tsukuna face, courtesy of Yuji, is used against him. Tsukuna is realizing that his cursed energy output and control over Megami's body has gotten pretty dull. To counterattack, Tsukuna disables Hollow Whisker Basket and plans to unleash the World Cutting Slash while trying to tank damage from Angel's Jacob's Ladder. He's admittedly saying, yo, my power is dwindling very fast and this onslaught is actually doing some real damage to the King of Curses. Of course, Yuji and Yuta had already predicted that Tsukuna would make such a plan to attempt this slash so they try to tie up Sukuna's hand while continue to attack him. Yuna notices that Sukuna's slashes are getting weaker and decides to move closer towards Sukuna without hesitation. We see this visceral panel where one of Sukuna's four arms are just ripped straight off because of Rika. That is so metal. But we quickly transition into a small flashback of Yuji narrating that souls can be basically combined, but not fully. He goes on to mention the example of when he battled Mahito. Mahito was able to grab the souls of others and and merge them together to create a new soul. But in the instance of Sukuna and Megami merging into one, it won't ever disappear or fully be merged as one. And ultimately, Yuji says that he will surely wake up Megami's soul. With Hana Karusu adding that her curse technique is a good match for Yuji's plan, the plan is to separate Sukuna and Megami's soul and dull Sukuna's tuning with Megami's body and hit him with Jacob's ladder, which we actually see happening here as Yuta does maximum output Jacob's ladder and again, I cannot wait to see this animated. This looks so beautiful off the manga panels. And just like the first time when Hana Karusu used it on Sukuna, he looked like this man was burnt to a crisp. We see him burnt to a crisp for a second time as Rika's holding on to him, biting him down. And as Yuji's getting ready to charge up with the punch, he says, wake up, Fushiguro. And it actually connects. He is now in this merger and this weird dimensional barrier. And we actually see dialogue come out of 
Fushigoro's mouth. But he doesn't say the thing we thought he would say that would say, save me or help me, guys. He said, I had enough. I don't want to live anymore. And this is where I feel like the community might be split because there's a part of me that says, in Megumi's defense, placating to the selfishness of your own desires as Sukuna and other people have mentioned in this series. If you want to be the best, you got to be selfish and you got to do whatever you want. So in Megumi's instance, he became a Jujutsu sorcerer to protect his sister. Well, now that Gojo is gone, his teacher slash father figure, because, you know, Toji wasn't really the best of fathers, is that really a hot take? And his sister dying earlier, Megumi doesn't have a reason to live. So his will to live already being extinguished makes sense. But then there's a part of me that would like to think during the battle with Gojo and Tsukuna, Megumi was there to see most of it. He was even attacked from one of Gojo's techniques. Look, even if you don't have a will to live, how can you see your comrades and your fellow sorcerers fighting for your life, fighting for the sake of the world? And now in this very pivotal, crucial moment, you just say, I don't want to live. I can't help but wonder if the narrative of Megumi wanting to be helped were to happen right here, that maybe he could have grabbed Yuji's hand, or even if he couldn't grab Yuji's hand in that particular moment, he could have at least restricted Sukuna enough in the way that when he was first joined with them in the beginning, and Sukuna's curse output was diminished a bit during the Maki Yuji two-on-one battle, that we could have seen something here. Now, granted, Sukuna's world-cutting slash has been diminished because his output and reserves has been dwindling in this battle, and even though I'm still kind of on that train of Yuta ultimately dying, he's not going to die with the cuts that he received here because clearly it's not as strong as it once was when Sukuna used it against Gojo and Kashima. But man, Megami fumbling the bag in this crucial moment, you hate to see it. So while I do have some sympathy towards Megami and knowing that, yeah, he's not Yuta, he's not Yuji, he's not trying to save the whole world, he just wants to protect his sister, there's also a part of me that's like, look man, if you don't want to live, that's fine. But these people are quite literally trying to save the world and stop the merger. You can at least be thankful for two goddamn seconds and help these motherfuckers out in this final battle. Jeez. But I do like how the narrator says, despite Sukuna doing the slashes on our protagonist and with Yuta's domain finally breaking due to the entrance of Maki or him just suffering a critical blow from the slashing attacks, Sukuna is so weakened that this quote unquote mediocre plan of Maki jumping in could have instinctively been avoided. So in the blink of an eye, a surprise attack pierced from Maki's soul-splitting sword is almost assured of the sorcerer's victories. Is that going to happen? That is yet to be determined. But even though that we have a weakened Yuta and Yuji right now, a fully powered Maki entering couldn't have been more of a grandiose entrance. And I love the parallels of how we see her pierce Sukuna similar in the way that Toji pierced Gojo way back in the hidden inventory arc. And there really is a good part of me that's wondering, is this truly the end game? But as I mentioned earlier, but do we or will we see Sukuna ingest the final finger so he can be truly fully powered? Not to mention the merger that definitely has to happen. And let's not forget what happened in chapter 250 of Sukuna monologuing. Can Yuta actually copy Gojo's limitless technique? So plenty of great things in this chapter. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and to see more Jujutsu Kaisen content on this channel, you can go ahead and click right here.